Today's mailbag comes to us from Jenna. I just wanted to send a quick note to thank Lisa for her candidness on the planning day. I work from home and I have three children. Dinner has always been a source of anxiety for me. Until this planning day, even though I've heard Lisa say that she doesn't cook many times before, it finally clicked. I don't need to try to force the meal planning. I have adjusted my planner and my budget and let my husband know that on the nights that I am supposed to cook, I will be ordering in or heating up something that he meal prepped ahead of time for us. Preparing meals, which should be simple, just takes up so much of my energy worrying about whether it will turn out okay or getting distracted with other things that I want or need to get done. It is so freeing to get Lisa's okay to plan to neglect that without being less of a wife or a mom. I just wanted to say thank you. Do you have an Organized 365 success story? If so, we would love to hear about it. Please send us an email at customer service at Organized 365 and tell us how you have taken back your home, your paper, and your life with Organized 365. Welcome to the Organized 365 podcast. I'm your host, professional organizer, productivity expert, and motivational speaker, Lisa Woodruff. This podcast will help you embrace progress over perfection and create lasting functional organizing in your home. I have so much to share with you, so let's get started. Ah, boy, you did it again. Well, Labor Day has come and gone. You didn't do planning day. You didn't sign up for the Productive Home Solution. I mean, when are you going to get started on organizing? One of the things that warms my heart when people come on and do the Wednesday podcast interviews is when they talk about how I have said over and over and over again, it's okay. It's okay if you didn't start. It's okay if you're still listening to the podcast. You are getting organized in your mind. You're just not actually putting it into action right now. And we are going to give a term for this. We are going to label this time period where you're starting to become aware that maybe organization could help you be more productive. Maybe organization could help you get back your time. Maybe you could be an organized person. You always thought, that you couldn't, but maybe you could be, but yet you're not actively working on your organizing yet? Like, what do we call that purgatory? We're going to call it passive organizing. Giving this time that you are exploring what kind of organization you want to implement in your life, when the most opportune time for you to implement this organization would be, how you're going to tackle it, the order in in which you're going to tackle it, We are going to call this passive organizing because, as I've said over and over and over and over and over and over and over over again, it usually takes about three years to get organized. But that first 12 to 18 months, you don't actually see the organization happening in the world around you. It is all happening in your mind, in your emotions, in your heart, in your beliefs. It's all happening on the inside. So let's really talk about what is passive organizing? Why does it take 12 to 18 months? How do you move from passive organizing to active organizing? And this is the first in a four-part series. So it's really, really important that you give this passive organizing time that you may be in a name, a voice, a purpose, so that you know that there is an end to passive organizing and you will pick the organizing that you want to put into your life eventually. So passive organizing, this is like the pink work that you do on yourself before anyone even notices that you're doing work. So if you've heard any of the podcasts I've talked about with work and how there are these four colors of work, there's pink, purple, blue, and green, and they go in that order. Before you do anything in your house, in your life, in your paid work. First, you have to think about it. You have to dream about it. You have to try it on for size in your brain. You have to become emotionally invested in the outcome before you take the job, marry the person, move to that city, go to that university, take that course, start that new habit. All of this happens in your mind first. And for some of us (laughs) analytical researchers, of which I am one, 
we spend a lot of time in pink work, a lot of time thinking about what's the perfect organizing system that I could put in place? What's the best time of year for me to do this? How much do I want to spend in time, in money, in effort? All of these questions get answered before you even take an action. This is when you've realized that, you know what? I mean, I'm, you're listening to an organizing podcast. So obviously, you are either in passive or active organizing. Because before you really realized that organization was a learnable skill, or that maybe organization was going to be the thing that was going to give you more time, or more sanity, or more you don't know what, but you want to find out, you weren't listening to podcasts about organizing. How did you used to spend your time? Whatever you're doing now, exercising, walking, doing the laundry, driving to a commute, supposed to be working. <laughs> before you started listening to the Organize 365 podcast, what were you listening to before this? What were you doing before this? And what was the spark that made you think, I'm going to Google search podcasts on organizing. I'm going to look up, I've heard about the Sunday basket thing. I'm going to research about the Sunday basket. When did you first downloading printables that would help you get organized or help you Organize the amount of work that it takes to live in a home. What were you doing before this? And what was the spark that got you on the rabbit trail of listening to productivity podcasts and organizing? Was it the TV show, The Home Edit? Was it when the Marie Kondo book came out? Like, what was it that raised your awareness enough where you went, huh, I don't think I have that in my life. I think maybe I should know more about it. Or maybe you're already way down the rabbit hole like I am, and you not only have gotten the spark, but you've organized your own house, and now you're a professional organizer, and you organize other people's houses. And you're wondering why the clients who had you come out and give you an estimate aren't having you come back and actually start the job, or when they book the job, they keep rescheduling, rescheduling, rescheduling. Your clients are in passive organizing. Like they understand that organizing will help them get what they want in time, reduction in stress, more productivity, but they're not really sure if they're ready to commit. They're not really sure if they're ready to do the work of organizing and they're still out there evaluating if this is going to be the best solution for them. So in passive organizing, you're doing quite a few things. You're consuming a lot of information. For me, an exorbitant amount of information. I am like an information hoarder. <laughs> like I just love to get as much information as possible. And you get to the point where you have so much information, sometimes you get paralyzed and you can't take action because you see the best in all of the possible different organizing solutions. So which one is going to be best for you? And you're also trying to figure out where are you going to start and in what order are you going to eat this elephant? Like which areas of your life and your home are most in need? And you have to figure out which approach to organizing will fit all of those needs. And then here's the thing. This is where I am whenever I'm considering anything new, like working on my wellness and my diet or my health or any of these things. I get so much information and there's so many different ways that I could approach whatever it is I want to do. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I've already spent like two years researching this. I just want it done tomorrow. Like I want my home and my personal and my work. Like I want it all organized tomorrow. Like what's the plan that's going to get this done faster? And you have to give the plan to get it done as much time as you gave the passive organizing thinking about the plan to get it done. And that's when you're like, hmm, you feel like I've wasted so much time thinking about the solution. I should have just put that time into the solution. So I'm going to take a little rabbit trail here, and then we're going to come back to passive organizing. The first time that I realized that the mental work that needed to be done was as important as the physical work that needed to be done to have any kind of an outcome was when I took the Colby assessment, K-O-L-B-E. It's not a personality test, and it's not like the DISC where it's telling you um, how you interact with other people as far as your personality, but it is a connotative test. It tells you how you think, how you process through information. And the first, when I took the Colby, I found out that I'm a quick start. 
quick starts like to talk about things. They're verbal processors. They make decisions very quickly, tend to change their mind a lot. The time when I took the Colby assessment, I was driving my team crazy. The amount that I was changing my mind on what the goals were because I'd find out more information or I'd get a new idea and I wanted to do the new idea more than I wanted to finish the old idea that everyone had already started to finish. Maybe you work with a quick start. But I also was in the process of writing the book, How ADHD Affects Home Organization. And it's a very small book. It's self-published. It's on Amazon. You can get it. And I wrote it in a weekend and I was so angry with myself because it was a year prior when I had recorded four podcasts about how ADHD affects organization and a year before that where I'd started taking notes and kind of made assimilations and and figured things out between what my kids were learning in school and ADHD and how it impacted their learning and then how I applied that to my clients who were getting organized. I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. If I can sit down on a Friday and I can have a whole book written by a Sunday. Why did I take two years to do this? I, I was I was so frustrated. And then it was a couple of years later when I took this Colby assessment. And the awesome thing about the Colby assessment is $50. It's not free. Is that you get this whole report that goes along with it. And anybody who ever applies to work at Organize 365, we have you take the Colby assessment before we hire you. And I and in the interview process, I explain how my brain works and then how pretty much everybody's brain in the Organize 365 team works, which is different. So my brain works like this. If I want to learn something or teach something or have a goal, I have to talk to people about it. So there are, there are four things that the Colby assessment measures. I'm only going to talk about three of them. One is basically how much information do you need? How much do you research something before you do it? The second one is how much structural organization do you need before you take action? And the third one is how much talking time do you need before you take action? We all have to do all of these. We all have to research. We all have to organize the work. And then we all have to talk about what we have learned while we're doing the work. For me, the majority of the time is talking about it. So my going to lectures about how ADHD affects learning and recording podcasts and talking to other people in interview podcasts, that is what I need to do in order to write a book about how ADHD affects home organization. I need to talk about it. I need to verbally process this. And then I will start researching just a little bit what other people have done And then I will organize my notes and I will produce the book. I will sit down and I will write the book literally in a weekend. Now we have edited it a few times, but again, it is self-published. I mean, it's, it's not, it's good. It's good. It's good enough. And it's a short book because of the subject matter. That's how I did the original, the productive home solution back when it was uh, 100 days. I did all that in one month. I recorded all of the videos the first time in three days. And again, I was like, why did I wait so long to record these videos when I could do them in three days? Because for me, the action comes out really fast at the end. I have to do a lot of researching, a lot of talking, a lot of thinking, a lot of driving, a lot of eating onion rings. And then all of a sudden, boom, like these podcasts. I'm going to record four podcasts today, but I've been thinking about the content of these podcasts for months. That's how my brain thinks. And I get very frustrated with myself because by the time I go to do something, it's almost like I'm over ready. I'm like, well, why didn't I just get started sooner? I literally can't. I have to talk to people about things. I have to research things. I have to listen to 20 podcasts on whatever topic it is that I want to teach on before I can teach on it. Now, the Organized 365 team, they're really high in researching and organizing information, and they're much lower on the talking about it part, which is typical. So your process may be different than mine. You may spend all of that time, that 18 months, actually reading a bunch of organizing books, taking notes, compiling a notebook of what is the best organizing system out there, which one is going to fit your family the best, and then organizing those notebooks into new sheets and and typing up all of that information instead of getting started organizing looks different, but it's all the same. It is our brain, our emotions, our bodies getting ready to say, yes, I am willing to move forward in this new thing 
that I want to do that I haven't done yet that I'm not sure I can do, but I'm willing to try because, and here's the catalyst, the cost of living the current life that I have today is untenable. And the change that will be required for me to live this new life is worth the pain I'm going to have to go through when I learn this new skill in order to get the result that I want. So we could think about this in other ways. If you want to get out of debt, the pain of eating beans and rice now and saying no to your children and no to yourself is worth it when you know that you could be out of debt in three, four, five years, be completely debt-free, and then have the rest of your life to do whatever you want with your money, with your time, with your income. Or the pain of having just heard from your doctor that you had a heart attack and you're going to have to take your health seriously, or you've now been diagnosed with diabetes, is greater than the ice cream you want to eat and the Netflix show that you want to binge watch. So you're going to eat the salad, you're going to walk the 10,000 steps, you're going to take the medication that the doctor tells you to take because you want to live a healthier life. You're tired of feeling tired and not your ideal body weight and not your ideal healthy self. And you're willing to put the time into planning your meals, in planning extra exercise time so that you can live a healthier, longer life. So for organizing, I mean, we can live unorganized for a really long time. Some of us have lived our entire lives unorganized. So while 87% of Americans believe organization is a learnable skill, and you're probably one of those 87%. There's this little voice in the back of our head that says, yeah, but maybe not for you, right? Like, yes, Lisa, people can go from a couch to a 5K and run a marathon, but maybe not for you. And so this passive organizing time frame is a time where you devour information, organize the information that you've received, and talk to people about the information that you're learning And you're talking around and learning about and organizing the idea of actually doing the thing of getting organized. Listening to podcasts, downloading ebooks, reading books, joining organizing communities. You are like a child who's playing dress up, who's trying on different costumes to see, is this the one that feels good for me? Is this the thing I want to be when I get older? Just because we're adults, this doesn't change. We still constantly think about our future self and we ruminate on this and we think about it and we research and we talk to our friends about it. We think, hmm, I wonder if I could be this future version of myself. I wonder if I could be more like Sheila. I wonder if I could be organized like Jenny. I wonder if I could cook like Diane. I wonder if I could, you know, like we think about We're constantly looking what other people have invested their time into and the outpouring that they are receiving in their life. And we think to ourselves, hmm, I wonder if those shoes would look good on me. I wonder if I could have that job. I wonder if I could travel to that place. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. And we can stay in wondering and in passive organizing basically forever. But you guys, This is what's cool. You guys have told me this. I was a child who did not have friends. I didn't, I did not have friends until I was an adult. Like I just didn't. I always had like one friend. And anyway, I did not have friends. And my mom said, when you're an adult, you're going to have so many friends, you won't know what to do with them. I'm like, okay, I will know what to do with them because I want friends. And when you DM me on Instagram and you say, well, you don't know me. And I'm like, oh, I, I recognize your name. <laughs> like, I recognize everybody's name. I have been so waiting to have friends my whole life. And so when I started Organize 365, and I was an in-home professional organizer, and I learned that organization was a learnable skill, and that I'm a teacher, I thought, I am going to teach this on the internet, and I am going to get friends. And then when I started the planning day a couple of years ago, I was like, okay, I'm going to give everyone their planner so that they will come to planning day with me so I can have friends to plan with. I love organizing. I mean, I love organizing. And as a teacher, I love seeing the light bulbs go off in your lives and in your families and in your communities 
as you realize, yes, you can be organized. You can learn the skill of organization. And as you get organized, you get more time. And when you get more time, you have more patience. And when you have more patience, more people want to be around you and you want to be around yourself. (laughs) And then you start to have a bigger impact in your home, your family, your community, everywhere. And so I want that so much that I am always thinking about how can we, as besties, keep organizing together? How can we keep working together? How can we, you know, how many podcasts can I record? How many Instagram stories can I share? How many live events can we do? Like, how much time can we spend together? Because I love spending time with you. But what I didn't realize I was doing, which I am doing, is that when you put on the podcast, and some of you will say, oh, I'm just going to put on the podcast because I want to listen to something and, I'm, and then I'm going to do, you know, watch TV or whatever. And then you will say all of the sudden, and you may find yourself doing it right now, you're organizing. You're like, I didn't intend to clean and straighten and tidy and organize, but it's like when you start listening to the Organized 365 podcast, you're just all of a sudden organizing. It's almost like I've tricked you into what you already wanted, which was getting organized. And so because I'm so excited about organizing, and as a teacher, I have analyzed you so much that I literally know, recording this in September, the energy that you are feeling in your house, especially if you live in North America, maybe not if you're in a different part of the world. I know. I know what a house needs in the second week in September. And so I know when I deliver you a podcast every single September that I'm going to be following what is right now the highest productivity energy you will have all year long. From the week after Labor Day until the second week in November, those are the 10 most productive weeks in the entire year. This same podcast in July would not resonate with you. And you may say, well, I'm binging through the podcast, so it's resonating with me. Let me just tell you, if you're listening to it in the middle of September, it's resonating with you four times more than it would if you're listening to it other times of the year because it matches the energy of a homeowner in America in the middle of September. So because I want friends so much, And because I have studied homes and organization for so many years, probably 25,000 hours, just focused on homes and organization, I am able to, you can borrow from me the motivation that I have for you to get organized. I I mean, right now, the energy inside my body is like, I want to stand up and jump around because I am so excited for the organized version of yourself who has more time, less stress, less anxiety, and more capacity, that I'm like, I'll get up in the middle of the night and record another podcast. I'll do another live. I'll schedule another live event. I will, like, what is it going to take for you to believe in your ability to get organized as much as I believe in your ability to get organized? And I think that's why you're still listening to the podcast because you're like, I know, but I mean, really? I have ADHD. I have 49 children. I have 13 jobs. I live in the city, in the suburbs, in in rural America. Like, yes, yes, and yes. Everyone can get organized. But there are three things that you need to personally believe or you need to process through in order to move from passive organizing to actively organizing. Some people do it a matter of a couple of weeks. Oh, I didn't know organizing was a thing. I didn't know it was a learnable skill. This girl sounds good enough. Let's do her program. Some of you are original listeners of the podcast. (laughs) This is podcast episode 501, not including all of the Wednesday podcasts, Tuesday podcasts, and bonus podcasts. And you've listened to them all, sometimes more than once. And you are still passively organizing, meaning that these three events have either not happened or not happened to the extent at which you will actually take action. And the first one, which is the biggest one, is that the pain of where you are today is not worse than the pain of not acting. What do you mean, Lisa? I mean that you're comfortable in the level of organization that you have today. Like, all right, well, maybe not as organized as I want to be, but I'm not, uh, you know, I can live with it. It's, It's not that big of a deal. I don't really want to exert myself to the point where I will do the system the way Lisa does it. Like, 
I don't want to spend that much money. I don't want to spend that much time. I don't want to put that much pressure on myself. But people who have started organizing, and you don't have to do the Organize 365 way, but have started organizing, they are where I was in 2012. And in 2012, when I quit my teaching job and came home and knew I needed to make an income and everything was falling apart around me, I was overweight. I was depressed. I was on antidepressants. My kids were falling apart. I was the worst mom I had ever been. I did not recognize my house at all. I literally went around and opened up all the cabinets and I was like, who lives here? I didn't even recognize the stuff that was in these spaces. I had been living in such a reactive and stressful time from the time my parents got divorced to my father got sick, to my father passed away, till we settled the estate, till we sold the family home. The kids got diagnoses in the middle of there. We started a special school. Like it was just like one thing after the next, after the next, after the next for seven years. And I was not the person, I, I didn't recognize myself. And maybe you're there too. Like you're like, this is, this is not who I thought I would be. This is, I don't recognize myself. Like I didn't think I'd grow up and become roadkill. And that's what happens. Life gets moving too fast and it literally runs us over and keeps on going. It's so rude. It doesn't even stop and be like, hey, sorry, I hit you back there. No, it's just like, and, and if you don't get up and move, you get hit with another car. I mean, it's just like, you're like, oh my gosh, when is it going to stop? And I just want to say, it's not. Like the hits are not going to keep on coming. They are going to keep on coming. The unexpected is going to happen right, left, and center. And the only decision you have, you're only in control of yourself. You got to get up and move to the side of the road and dust yourself off. And then you need to say, okay, what do I need? Because clearly no one else is taking care of me. So what do I need? For me in January of 2012, I said to Greg, I know I need to make money and everything. I need to get this house in order. I need to feel like I'm in control of something, anything. I'm not in control of our children. I'm not in control of my parents. I'm not in control of the economy. I'm not, like there's so many things I'm not in control of. I wasn't even in control of my own emotions. I needed to feel like I was in control of something and that something was gonna be a storage room and my closet and our pantry. And like I was going to physically start taking control of the environment that I was in, in order to feel like I had some say. And in the process of doing that, I moved from my 30s into my 40s. And often when we need to, our life has gotten moving so fast, we feel like we've gotten run over and we've become very disorganized, we are almost always in the second thing, which is a big life event or a golden window. Milestone birthday, a new baby, a new job, a new house, a loss of some kind, a health diagnosis. There's some big thing that has happened or more likely multiple big things that have happened that you just don't even know how to process it. I mean, it happens to other people, but it hasn't happened to you. And you don't know these other people and you don't even know who to talk to about it. And you feel like you're all by yourself and that no one has ever experienced what you're experiencing. And the reality is everyone has or will at some point in their life. Everyone will settle in a state. Everyone will end up with a family member with a significant medical diagnosis. Everyone will experience some kind of a divorce somewhere in their immediate sphere. We will experience these things, but we don't know how to process it. And we don't know what to do with it because we don't know where to go with all of our big questions and our big thoughts and our big emotions. And so we are like, okay, well, I, I don't have enough time. Maybe when I have more time, maybe when I have more money, maybe when I have more resources, maybe when I have more bandwidth. But here's the, the crappy thing about it. The more disorganized you feel and you are, the more you become disorganized. Like it does not the right its own ship. Like you have to draw a line in the sand and say, okay, I am going to live proactively and not reactively. And it is tough and it is hard. And the first steps 
you don't see the difference for a while. Just like if you make a difference in how you're going to spend your money or your physical wellness. The first four salads you eat aren't going to make a difference on you know what you look like in the mirror or how you feel in the morning. It's when you have salad every day for four months where you're like, oh, you know what? Everything's fitting better now. Same thing with organizing. Like You could be in these passive states, passive organizing for a long, long time. A weekend declutter isn't going to do it for you. Even one of the organized 365 holiday blitzes, they're fun. They're fabulous. We'll organize some little thing for you, like the holidays or getting ready for the summer, but it doesn't last. It's just like, you know, having a little treat at the end of the day. You really need to decide to commit that you are going to become a different future version of yourself, an organized version. And if this is where you are today and you're passive organizing, I encourage you to passively organize through my book, Organization is a Learnable Skill. I mean, I didn't write that book in a, in a weekend, I could tell you that, because I, I didn't want to write it. I did want to write it, and I didn't want to write it. I did want to write it all the way until October, and then I did not want to write November and December. You're like, we need to publish the book. You said you were publishing the book. Like, remember, you're going on tour. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to write November and December. And you would think, why? You're at the end of your organizing journey. This is when you're organized. Yes, this is when my house was organized. This is when my life looked organized. This is when people realized I was organized. I had started Organized 365. I was making money. I had a business. Like on the outward appearance, I looked organized. Do you remember what happens in November and December every year? All of the holidays. My dad was gone. My parents are divorced. I mean, it was, I was not a happy person in November and December. And you know what you have to do in November and December as the female head of the household? You need to take hours and hours and hours and go through all of your Christmas decorations from when you were a child and bring them upstairs and decorate the house. And I was not a fun person to be around when I decorated the house because it reminded me of all the Christmases that were great that I had when I was a child that I don't have now. And the emotions that were in that storage room and the things I hadn't processed through yet that I processed through in November and December were way harder than crying in my closet in January because I didn't have enough clothes to wear because I didn't. I only had three outfits. And the reason why I didn't want to organize my closet was because none of it fit. None of it was ever going to fit again. And I didn't have the money to have enough clothes to actually wear clothes. When you see me today on Instagram, you know, living with my grandbaby and taking him on vacation, that's the after picture. If you want to see the during picture, listen to Organization is a Learnable Skill. Listen to podcast episode 69 about my depression story. I was where you are. It wasn't easy, but I got organized and I became a proactive person after living reactively for seven years you would not have been my friend in 2012. I was very negative. I was very, woe is me, pity me, and you should help me, and why aren't you coming to rescue me? I was. But I finally got to the point, December of 2011, where the pain of being a working mom who wasn't being a good mom and couldn't organize her house and didn't even know where anything was and Somehow we were negatively making money because I had a job because there were all these things we had to buy that I couldn't do and I wasn't sleeping. And I, the pain of living that life was more than I could bear. And I was turning 40, so pivotal year. And I was like, oh my gosh, the women in my family live into their hundreds. I'm going to be doing this for the next 60 years. No, thank you. I want to be 100, but I cannot live this way for another 60 years. I will not make it. And I will make everyone around me wish <laughs> they weren't making it with me because I will make their lives miserable. So I had all these golden windows. I was turning 40. You know, my kids were in full-time school. Greg supported anything and everything I've ever wanted to do. He always says, yes, you can quit. Yes, you can start that business. Yes, you can do it. It's always yes, 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 yes. Whatever I wanted to do, do he was going to say yes. So I did it. I quit the job, came home, started organizing. And that leads to the third thing that you need when you are going to move from passive to active organizing. And that is 
believing that you can do it. And that's really the only thing that is standing in your way of moving from thinking you can get organized to actually making a plan to get organized. Believing that you are capable of learning the skill of organizing. And I'm telling you, you are. I'm the teacher. I know it. Thousands of people have gotten organized. Personally, one-on-one, through our courses, thousands. And you are very special. But you are not not able to get organized. That's not how you're special. You're special in whatever you can uniquely give and offer the world. And we're not going to know what that is. You're not going to know it. I'm not going to know it. And the world isn't going to know it until you get enough white space, mental space, breathing room in your life in order to contemplate what that could possibly be. And that comes from focusing on yourself, controlling only what you could control, and the act of physically organizing your home and your paper and your life and your calendar is a way that you are able to grab that control and physically work out what your future self will be doing while you physically organize your home. And so it's never too late. It's never too late to get started in organizing. And you could stay in passive organizing as long as you want. I love that you listen to the Organize 365 podcast. I love sharing my analytical observations with you. I love being your virtual friend. But I also know that you are uniquely created to do something like I was uniquely created to create Organize 365. And it was in the process of organizing myself and my life that I was able to realize that it was Organize 365. And I'm not saying everybody becomes a professional organizer. I'm saying that as you take charge of your life and you say, I am in control of my response to everything that happens to me, and I can actively create and orchestrate what my future life will be, then you start to create time when you start thinking like, oh, well, if I can organize the closet and I can organize the storage room and I can make a plan and all of a sudden the plan is manifest in my home physically, well, what if I decide to get out of debt, decide to run a marathon, decide to start a foundation, decide to go back to work, decide to adopt a baby, whatever it is? then all of a sudden bigger and bigger and bigger and more personal plans start to get planned and implemented and come to fruition too. So the Organize 365 products are always available and they are lifetime purchases. I made these two decisions a long, long time ago because I am a teacher who teaches the skill of organization. And I know that you can get a wild hair and you can be like, that's it, I am starting tomorrow and it could be the middle of September on a Wednesday. And so our cart is always open. You can always get a Sunday basket. You can always join the Productive Home Solution. You can always get a Friday work box. You don't have to wait until the next launch. You don't have to wait until everybody else is going to start because everything is cyclical and runs on demand. And you don't have to worry about if this is the right time to start because you're moving, you're having a baby, you're going on vacation, you're starting a new job, the holidays are coming, it's a Saturday. Like there are no obstacles in the way of doing the Organize 365 products and programs and courses because it's lifetime access. Because I know life is going to get in the way. You are gonna get a cold. You are gonna go on vacation. You are going to have unexpected events happen but the course will still be there and the community will still be there and the co-working club will still be there and you'll be able to jump back in as soon as life opens up again and you get your time and your capacity back. And that's why it's lifetime access and that's why it's a rolling start. So you can start right now and we will ship out your physical products and your dashboard will get unlocked instantly and you'll start receiving the emails to start in moving from passive organizing to active organizing. It doesn't matter that we started last week We're always starting. Every week is a week that we're starting. Every day is a day that we're starting. And I would love to walk you through getting organized. Now, next week, we're going to talk about how Marie Kondo is the Atkins diet of organizing. So make sure that you come back for that episode.